All right, let's take a deeper look at the Blazor architecture. We have a browser here. And again, I'll draw the dome here. And we need to be able to run the code on the browser. And how do we do that? So um, there is this thing that's called WebAssembly. And if you go to the WebAssembly the website, they say that WebAssembly is a compiler target. So then what is a compiler target? So if we look at the compiler, so compiler, we have a compiler here. Compiler target is, if we look at, there's this compiler source, and then there's this compiler target. So compiler source is the source language. And compiler target is just the target language. So compiler is basically, when it compiles, it converts the source language to the target language. So for example, um, C sharp, after compilation, it turns into, right? It turns into intermediate language. And how does the intermediate language run on a, on a computer? So if we have a computer here, um, the intermediate language is not a machine language that can run directly on the, on the computer. So what it does is that uh, it has, we have a .NET runtime, right? And the intermediate language actually runs within the context of .NET runtime. So if we come back to this Blazor topic, so WebAssembly is a, let's say it's a language that can run directly in the browser. And uh, how can that be possible? That's because um, most of the, the vendors like Chrome, like um, Google Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer, Firefox, most of the vendors, they agreed on this WebAssembly standard. And most of them, most of the products, they are able to support this web WebAssembly standard. So as long as um, your code is written in this WebAssembly language, then there's browser supported and it runs actually a kind of like natively and runs really fast. Performance is amazing. So how can the C sharp run inside the browser? The answer is it runs as a web assembly. That's not entirely true in terms of uh, how Blazor runs on the browser. Blazor actually um, does not, we do not actually turn the C sharp codes into web assembly. What it does is that there is this thing that is called mono um, web assembly. And the mono web assembly is a runtime. Mono web assembly itself is a web assembly. So it runs on the browser. So if I draw if I draw another um, square here, and if we call this mono web assembly, so this is the um, when the server runs. So if we have server here, and if we have our uh, Blazor application hosted in the server, 
and when the user sends a HTTP request through the browser the server actually first it pushes the mono web of something to the browser right and it, it it is actually a runtime it works like a runtime so after that our blazor applications the blazor framework as well as dotnet standard uh, libraries um, all of the dependencies of our blazor applications will be downloaded to the server so um, the next layer would be would be our um, done at runtime All right so oh, sorry not the, um, the done as standard done as standard and the next layer so this would be also downloaded and all right, so we have our Blazor framework here. And within the Blazor framework, our Blazor application actually runs here. All right, so our Blazor app runs here. So lastly, our Blazor app runs here. And how does the Blazor app actually produces the uh, HTML? As we know that uh, Blazor actually uses a component-based architecture, which means uh, our developers actually created a lot of components. We create components uh, inside the Blazor applications. So, and we call it the component tree. So, for example, if we have a, a computer, if we have a, a UI design that looks like this, so we have a menu items, and then we have um, we have uh, some area that looks like that, and within this area, we have uh, uh, two like kind of like two panels, and uh, something is displayed here and then something is displayed here and then a picture maybe um, displayed here then here we actually have uh, a component tree here right so we have our root component which is this one right the biggest one so we have a root component and then we have two components on the second level and then we have uh, in here we have three components All right, so it's component tree so this component tree um, constantly changes when user interacts with the use with the interface right so the user clicks somewhere or press keys changes the data so the data would be changing the components would be reloading um, uh, right. Sometimes it may switch to a completely different um, set of components. So this component tree is actually being tracked by the Blazor application. So we would have two. So this is uh, the previous component tree. It's previous tree, and this is the current tree. Entry. So um, whenever user makes some changes, it generates the current tree, and then it compares with the previous tree, right? So here it makes a comparison between this two, uh, the previous tree and the current tree, and then it creates a diff. It calculates a, a, a component tree div and this component tree div will be sent to the DOM and used to update the DOM 
and then the user would be able to see the changes. So um, this is the, the client side blazer, right? This is how it works. So to summarize a little bit, the blazer application, they are actually, so all of these are C sharp DLLs, right? C sharp DLLs, C sharp DLL, and, um, and this is mono. Uh, web assembly this is actually a web assembly so this is the client side so the server side let's cover server side here the server side blazer works very similarly just like um, in our previous video uh, we covered but all these things actually happens on the server side that's why it's called server side so if I try to cover that again here so we have a browser here right and then we have our DOM here and in here um, we have the Blazor, now I remember the name, Blazor server.js, and then on the server, I have to draw a bigger rectangle here to represent the server. So in here, of course, we're going to have our .NET, if I follow the same way of drawing, we're going to have our .NET framework. So we're not limited. We can use the full .NET framework here. It doesn't have to be using the .NET standard. Um, we can have our .NET framework. Um, and then within it, we can run our Blazor, Blazor framework. Right. And within it, we have our Blazor app. And then we have our previous tree and current tree. And uh, so our Breezer applications also communicates where's the where uh, through the signal error channel, right? Signal error WebSocket channel. So then what happens is that the uh, the user sends a request, um, and then the message is sent over to the Blazor application, and then the components gets updated, the data gets refreshed, and uh, the comparison happens here, and then this creates the UI div, right? So I'll write the UI div here. So we have the UI div, right? So this UI div is sent over to the browser through the Blazor server .js file, and then uh, gets the actual DOM is uh, updated, and the user sees the results. So that's how Blazor works in detail. And if you enjoy this video, please uh, give it a thumb up and please sub subscribe my channel. I will have uh, future videos cover Blazor as well as other topics on programming. Thank you very much for watching.